Does anyone have a tissue? <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Thank you, uh, Glenn. That's, uh, you understand my predicament. <laughs> um, um, I don't. I'm. I'm speechless, Glenn. That was the most beautiful and generous introduction I've ever heard ever about anyone ever. And that is such a reflection of you. That's a reflection of you. Um, Glenn has extraordinary organization called Bring Change to Mind for Mental Health and you, Glenn, bring to mind grace and love and poetry and deep, deep, lasting uh, friendship. And you've affected me in ways beyond your knowing, so thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's a lot. <laughs> Oh, that's charming. I'm giving myself the space. Okay, okay. Um, I want to. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, Variety for this incredible honor. And I'm sorry to the people in the back with the fish. I, all I see is this in the back, and you're going to be so mad because my speech is in short. And I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really a bummer, but it's a big chance. I got to say it. Um, um, and I also I want to thank. Um, uh, I want to thank um, my support system, before I go on, of the beautiful women and friends in my life who have been the wings beneath my wings, the wind beneath my wings, who have, who have helped carry, because it's a, it's a lot to carry, especially as Glenn talked about, you know, vicarious trauma, and to be immersed in these issues every day for 25 years, I can't even imagine all the women who have come before, who have done this work tirelessly for so long, who are my true heroes, because it's a lot. So um, I want to thank also, I just want to shout out um, to Robin Mazur, um, our executive director who runs Joyful Heart, who has inspired me deeply and who leads us in such an incredibly beautiful way. And this is our 20th year, and it feels like we're beginning again. So that's profound. Thank you, Robin. Um, so um, today, what I want to talk about, wait, before I do that, I just have a lot of feelings. I want to say to Anita, um, you are a light and um, so inspirational, and I wish I had the poise and elegance and the self-determination and command that, that you have at your age. And thank you for bringing all this newness and graceful power, but with beauty, radiance, and elegance to it. Really. Um, Amy, you know, I met you and I fell in love with you as everyone does immediately. You make everything better. You make shoulders go down and relax people and turn anything that's stressful into um, immediate fun. I saw you tonight, today, and I saw you in your glorious sequiny pink dress, and I immediately thought, and I said to you, I feel like my mom is here with me because you're Jane Mansfield incarnate right now, so thank you for that. I always look for signs if she's here, and she is today with me, and what you said tonight, uh, today, I'm drunk, um, what you said, I shouldn't have had the third scotch, and I apologize um, to Variety. Next year, hopefully, you'll get a sober honoree. Anywho, um, but um, I, I, um, you just make everything better. And I see you, and I'm like immediately happy, and I want you to nuzzle me in your bosom. Um, Shonda, what? Shonda, I had to like be cool because I was sweating to meet you. You're, you're, you're a living icon and there's just not a lot of them. And I've got a pretty good showrunner. And, um, but you're a woman. <laughs> so um, I am uh, in awe of you and I thank you for the stories you tell with the uh, humanity and grace 
and how you dig into humanity and make people want more love. So thank you for that. I'm Variety. You made an excellent choice with me for the cover. <laughs> and it's funny, because I talked um, to the group, you know, and I said, guys, thank you for this. And then they told me that I was the honoree for the next four years, <laughs> which I thought was awesome. That was a joke. <laughs> oh my God, guys, I know it's hot and there's fish, but please stay with me. Um, so thank you, and thank you, um, Emily, who wrote um, the piece on me for um, my favorite article in my 87 years being on SVU of, of having the first article that I felt um, represented me authentically into the person I've grown into, which took a long time. It took a long time, people. I'm 60. Um, but today, today I want to talk about reversing convictions. And more specifically, I want to talk to you about how impossible it is to reverse mine. It's impossible to reverse my conviction that survivors matter. It is impossible to, ver to reverse my conviction that what happens to us matters. That our society must respond to survivors in a more compassionate, holistic, deeper, and a more nuanced understanding of what healing means. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that after a trauma, survivors can reclaim lives of hope, of possibility, of audacious risk, beautiful intimacy, and glorious, glorious, abundant joy. And I stand before you as evidence of that statement. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that we must listen to survivors as experts on what justice means. It is extraordinary how little their voices are consulted, let alone incorporated, in the process of, in the process of deciding how to repair harm. Justice is not a one-size-fits-all journey. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that patriarchal impunity has to end. Patriarchal impunity is when a male-dominated system exempts perpetrators from punishment. Yeah. <laughs> Studies show that only 20% of all rape cases in the U.S. are reported to the police. And that between five and zero, zero percent of all rapes result in a guilty plea or a conviction. So why do 80% of victims not report? Because they're met with a system that grants impunity to perpetrators, a system that blames victims, a system that accepts only those victims who are experienced as real rape, a system that completely completely misunderstands the neurobiology of trauma, which causes behavior in women that doesn't fit the picture of how a real victim would act. Is the change needed that victims should just pull themselves together, and just buck up and report anyway? No, no, it's the system that receives them that needs to change. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that, and the conviction of my extraordinary team, a joyful heart, that the backlog of untested rape kits can be brought to zero, that the testing of all new kits must be mandated, that we need a statewide kit tracking system, and that survivors have the right, the right to access the status of their kids. 
It is impossible to reverse my conviction that grammar, yes, grammar, that we use when we speak about rape must change. In the sentence, a woman is raped. There's a crime and there's a victim. But there's no perpetrator. Where's the perpetrator? Where is he? Statistically, as we know, most likely, he's walking free. He's so free that he doesn't even appear in the language about the crime that he committed. Is that not extraordinary? It's extraordinary that in the very grammar, the perpetrator goes free. Reint reintroducing perpetrators in the language of rape will make some very unwieldy grammar. But that's the nature of change. It's unwieldy. It's messy. It's uncomfortable. But it's necessary. I'm sweating. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that we must interrupt again and again the fiction that rape is a crime of passion. If there are two people and they're making out on a couch for this sake of this example, let's say it's a man and a woman that we know that this violence happens across the entire gender spectrum. So they're making out and there's probably all sorts of passion going on and then things get hotter and heavier and even more passion. But when the woman decides that she doesn't want to go further, that she doesn't want to have intercourse, and the man decides that he does, and then he penetrates her, that is not simply the next step in the trajectory of his passion. That's an exercise of power. Rape is a crime of power. Rape is a crime of power and control that is thousands of years in the making. Thousands of years in the making. But it's a construct, and it was built and assembled and reinforced over time. And I celebrate our collective role in dismantling that construct. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that there are those who hold power positions, positions of power within the patriarchal system who can be moved to change it, who can be allies to women. And if you are hearing this, and if you hold one of those positions in this system, or in a segment of this system, say in the entertainment industry, if you have a sense that you can influence how the industry operates, that you can make decisions about who has the power, who doesn't have the power, who gets a voice, and who doesn't, then have the integrity to examine your actions. How your actions contribute to either keeping the system the way it is, the way it's always been, or to changing it. Have the integrity to examine how you benefit from the system the way it is now. Have the courage, have the vision, have the foresight to use your power as a catalyst for change. So that future women, future generations of women, will have a different experience in this world, and who knows, maybe you'll even have a hand in changing your daughter's future. It is impossible to reverse my conviction that the single most important thing on the variety cover, more than the picture of me, which I love so much, <laughs> So thank you, Victoria Stevens, um, is the word women, is the word women. The fact that it's plural, the fact that we work best in partnership as champions for each other, as allies, especially allies who can boldly disagree with each other, who can challenge each other, 
plus push, push each other to be better, braver, stronger, and more vulnerable. Because, yes, there is so much strength in that, being vulnerable, being all of ourselves, in integrating all of ourselves, that feminine power of being vulnerable. It is also impossible to reverse my conviction, not that anybody would want to, that my best ally is my husband, Peter. We live, work, advocate, and think, and raise our kids, fight, <laughs> and argue, and we laugh, we reconcile, and we find our way back to each other in partnership. We also write my speeches together. So he wrote this part. I had nothing to do with it. He is so handsome and so tall and attractive. Everyone wants to date. Peter, that's too much. It's too much. So those are a few of my convictions. I have many others next year. And I hold them proudly, boldly, confidently, and defiantly, and with hope. And I do want to say something uh, about the Harvey Weinstein conviction, specifically about the reason that it was overturned. Too many women's voices. Too many women's voices were allowed to speak. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't imagine anything more beautiful than that. The Daily Podcast uh, episode talked about how it was so risky for the prosecution to have that many women testify. Risky to let women speak? <laughs> You're damn right it is. Too many women speaking brings change. Too many women speaking shakes the establishment. Too many women means we get listened to more and people might actually hear what we have to say. Look what happened when women started saying just two words, right? Me too. Justin is an example. A tidal wave of change. Me too. And then, of course, there was the response, right? The Me Too movement the backlash, the examination of whether changes have come, that the changes have come are lasting or are even positive. Of course there's a backlash. What did they expect? For women to speak repeatedly, loudly, together, with a purpose, for, them, for there to be no backlash? The backlash is evidence of how powerful those voices were how powerful those voices are. Thank you. And lastly, um, I just want to say that I uh, love the line under my name on the cover, which was TV's ultimate enforcer. So I thank you for that. Um, I thank you for that, Emily, and I thank you for that. Trish, I thank you for that. And yes, I absolutely believe that something should be enforced. Listening to survivors should be enforced. Con continuing to use our voices for change. Celebrating our beautiful, our extraordinary intuition. Continuing to care for ourselves. And each other with curiosity, with compassion, and with love. And yes, standing by our own convictions. What a joy and what an honor and what a thrill to enforce all those things together with you. Thank you.